Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This here is the Wavelink 5 gigabit USB-C Ethernet adapter and it supports 10, 100, 1000, 2.5 and 5 gigabit network speeds. And with it, you can essentially upgrade any device with a USB-C or a USB-C 3 with an adapter to a 2.5 or even a 5 gigabit link speed network. Well, at least in theory. Now, when I first heard about this device, I thought, five gigabits, USB-C, really? But then I had a look at the price tag. Now, you can find them on AliExpress for around 16 pounds or 19 US dollars. And for this price tag and the multi-speed that it claims to support, it certainly becomes a lot more appealing. Now, another cool set of features that are pretty standard these days are Wake on LAN and Auto MDIX. Wake on LAN allows you to turn on a computer remotely, providing of course that your motherboard supports it. And actually I have a few videos that show you how you can do that programmatically or using your favorite routing software, you can check it in the description. And Auto MDIX, which allows you to you know, make peer-to-peer -peer connections like it's 1995, but without the need of a special crossover cable. Now, if you are as old as me, I'm sure you're gonna remember this, but don't worry, I don't really do LPT or COM connections anymore. <laughs> unless if I'm nostalgic. So I tested these adapters on a few devices, such as on an Unraid based NAS, and I used the link station for that, a Raspberry Pi 5, TrueNAS Scale 24, and my Helios Predator laptop. Oh, and of course, my own personal PC. And the connection methods that I use in all these tests, or in most of these tests, were peer-to-peer -peer with one of these cards on each device, and a CAT7 cable between them, peer-to-peer -peer with one of these cards on just one of the devices, and again, a CAT7 cable between them, and peer-to-switch with one of these cards on, well, the main computer connected to the switch. All of them always connected with the CAT7 cable. My first test was to simply connect the device to my personal Windows 11 computer and my computer to the network and therefore the internet. Now, the configuration at first was like super simple. All I had to do was install the drivers that I found on the Wavelink website and then I set the jumbo frames to 19 kilobytes. And if you don't know what jumbo frames are, all this does is it allows larger payloads than the standard MTU or which is, you know, the transmission unit size, which typically is 1500 bytes. Now, since my switch only supports one, 2.5 and 10 gigabits, the auto negotiation between the adapter and the switch only worked at 2.5 gigabits. And as a result, I didn't really notice any difference from the built-in 2.5 PCI adapter. My computer performed just as expected. Now for my next experiment, it was a direct cable or peer-to-peer -peer connection between my main computer and my Unraid NAS, which ran on my old SSD link station. Now, as you guys pointed out time and time again, including myself, the link station only comes with a 2.5 gigabit card. So this thing seemed like a really good candidate for it. Now, like I said earlier, this device supports Auto MDIX, so I used a standard CAT7 cable to connect them, so no need for a crossover cable. Luckily for us, Unraid has an awesome app and plugin catalog. So all I had to do was install the correct chipset driver plugin bundle, which is the R8157. They recommend that you add this line right here to the Go file in Unraid, but I didn't really do that because, well, it caused me more problems. So instead, I just reset auto negotiation with this command right here, and then I set the device to work at five gigabits with this command. And after doing this, it worked just fine. When I ran the eTool ETH1, it showed that it was working at five gigabits. Now, the next thing that I had to do was to configure the peer-to-peer -peer network between the PC and Unraid. So on Windows, you just click on IP4 and set the IP to say 10.10.10. something with a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. No gateway and no DNS. You don't really need that because it's just two computers. Then on Unraid, you make sure that the second ethernet adapter is on the same network. Just enter something like 10.10.10.whatever and over here I'm using .12, but you can use whatever 
it is available, followed by the subnet mask, or in this case, the CIDR, which will be 24. I also set the MTU to 9014 bytes. I didn't enable bridging or bonding because, again, I don't need none of that stuff on this adapter. Oh, and you also need to ensure the USB-C is assigned to the second slot. Just make sure that under interface rules, the USB is assigned to ETH1. Now be careful here, all right, because I did lock myself out a few times and I had to go to the command line and fix a few things. So a word of caution here, all right? I ran three types of tests. The first test was just copying a file and reading a file from a shared folder. The other one was an iPerf3, and the third one was a crystal mark test. And to be fair, I was a little bit disappointed with the results. I couldn't really get past the 430 gigabit mark on the crystal marks, and as for the iPerf tests, I got a consistent 3.3 gigabits, which is only like one gigabit extra from the out-of-the-box LinkStation 2.5 network card. And to be fair with you guys, I was actually expecting a bit more, to be honest, the double to be more precise. But at least the connection was stable and I didn't notice any kind of like hip hiccups or anything. Now on my next test, I used the Raspberry 5, but before we get too excited, don't forget to subscribe and like the video because it really helps out the channel. Thanks for that. Now on the Pi 5, I also had the same peer-to-peer -peer setup and the same type of network configuration. I did, however, reduce the jumbo frames on Windows to nine kilobytes and set the same thing on the Raspberry 5. This is just to uh, you know, avoid mismatch between the MTUs on both devices, as sometimes they might cause some problems. Now on the Raspberry Pi, the link speed was super weird and the device was at half duplex. But when I ran an iPerf test, I was getting consistent three gigabit speeds. And right here was when things started to get a little bit weird and hairy with the drivers. I tried installing the drivers directly from Realtek on the Pi, but I got a warning indicating that the driver was already present on the kernel. So I had to do some debugging on the drivers and recompiling the kernel and just not worth it. After all of that, I got the exact same speed <laughs> and no change whatsoever in the link speed or in the duplex status. So Wavelink or Realtek, please fix this and get better drivers because this is just appalling. My two final tests were TrueNAS and my quite old Helios Predator laptop. Now, and to make this short, with TrueNAS scale, it just simply didn't work. And after the pain that I had with the Pi 5, I just couldn't be bothered with drivers and kernel recompilation. So again, not worth it, I just left it there. And finally, I tested it on my Helios Predator laptop. And it worked similarly to the Link Station. At first I thought it was maybe being bottlenecked by the Link Station or some drivers, but now I was trying it on my laptop that runs Windows 11. Now for a 1.2 gigabit ethernet connection, it worked really well and saturated the connection to, to the internet. But as far as iPerf 3 tests were concerned, I couldn't get past the 3.5 gigabit mark. Now I played with jumbo frames, with link speeds, drivers, driver, you know, whatever, you name it. But no, 3.5 was where it was at. So my final conclusion, is this actually worth it? Well, if you have a PCI Express slot available, no, it's not worth it. I personally either would buy a PCI network card that works at 2.5, or go straight to 10 gigabits, it really is a hit or miss depending on your machine, your OS, and if the planets are aligning well. I'm not going to lie, I spent quite a lot of time messing around with drivers and debugging and whatnot. Another thing that really scared me was that while I was doing the tests and fiddling with the drivers, the company completely removed the drivers from their website. One minute it was there, and the next it was not. So, that's definitely not good and not very reassuring. But I'm a half glass full kind of guy. So if you have a device lying around that either doesn't have a network card um, and or an available PCI slot, or you simply want to give a little bit of a lift to your network speed, like I did it with the link station, and you got 15 bucks extra to spend, why not? Now, is it worth it going from 2.5 to 3.5? I leave that to you. Anyway, I hope that this was useful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.